up, we're off to see Sarah, and Sarah's a Decoder Me participant, and we're going to discuss the Decoder Me results. For five years, Professor Chris Ponting has been leading the world's largest genetic study into ME. His team analysed the DNA of more than 15,500 people across the UK. Let's go on in. Thank you very much. I'll follow you. Like Sarah, who lives near the Scottish border. She was a teacher before being diagnosed with moderate ME 12 years ago. Oh, lovely house. Simple tasks can now trigger days of suffering. She says her chair has become the centre of her world. It's like my body's in distress and it's screaming at me. It's not exactly pain. It's sort of deeper than pain. And it's, yeah, and I just have to sit down. It's estimated that around 400,000 people in the UK suffer from ME. But many feel the disease is misunderstood by friends, family and the healthcare profession. Something Chris is hoping the initial results of this study can change. So here we go. Yeah, right. So what we have found are eight places in people with ME's DNA yeah. that on average are different. That is our first step. Our first step is to demonstrate that there's a biological, organic difference. Yeah. In fact, eight differences, yeah. at least, people with ME and, and others. Yeah. And now that we have narrowed down to these very small slices of, of our DNA, we can then tell everyone in the scientific community it is up to their job, up to them now, to find out what has gone wrong right. for so many people. Yeah. But well, you have ascertained that it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. And, and what I would love is for anyone who doesn't think it's a thing, that this is not an organic illness. Yeah. For them to have in front of them the yeah. evidence that you have just told me, yeah. it is a thing. Thing. And that, that was my motivation for doing it when I first saw it, to, to like legitimise this thing that I have. To, you know, to validate it and give it a name, it does exist. No, it now exists on my DNA. It's not, it's not in here and it's not, uh, I've not made it up and I'm not um, imagining it, it's real. It's in my body, isn't it? Last year, Channel 4 News reported on the case of Maeve Boothby O'Neill. A coroner ruled she died at the age of 27 from malnutrition caused by severe ME. Her story highlighted a need for better support and treatment options within the NHS. There are some fantastic doctors and clinicians out there, but we still hear from people where their doctor doesn't believe that they have a real, in inverted commas, illness, that it's the result of deconditioning or something else. So from the minute we've published these results, people can go into the doctor's surgery and say, here are, you know, are genetic causes for the illness that I have. Now how are you going to support me? The Decode ME team at the University of Edinburgh are celebrating a breakthrough, but we are still a long way from any diagnostic test or cure. 80% or more of people with ME are female. And as a female dominant disease, it has not been A, believed, and B, uh, well-funded to the level that male dominant diseases have been. For me, it's, it's hugely exciting. It is significant. In, in so many ways. At the personal level for people with ME, they are telling me this is a breakthrough for them. But then scientifically, this um, lights the path f for the future science that will be done for people uh, with ME. Um, it, it is not the end of what is needed. It is the end of the beginning of what is needed. 20 years ago, when it was yuppie flu, we've gone from that to where we are now. So in 20 years time, you know, you'd like to think, wouldn't you, that there's going to be a diagnosis, there's going to be treatment, there's, there's going to be a pathway, there's going to be, yeah. So that, that's, that's what I've got from today. It's all actually going on out there. Uh, so don't feel hopeless. I'm telling that to myself. There may be hope.